Are you content? Hmm. Most of the time I am content. Is contentment sexy? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be sexy, but it sure is powerful. It sure is. Listen to this week's episode of Get Real with the English, English Sisters. It's available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And today we're going to be chatting about why contentment is underrated. Yeah, and how... You know, maybe just living a life that's good enough is enough. Is actually good enough. <laughs> it really is enough. So, yeah. Yeah, because bit. perfection. I mean, we see the perfect lifestyle, the perfect house. Oh, my goodness. The me. perfect looks. Exactly. And when you think, well, I don't I don't look like that. No, we're constantly really striving, striving. striving for... And my house doesn't look like that. Oh, I my goodness I haven't got that me. car. I haven't got that hair. I haven't got that body. I haven't got that car. I haven't got that house. <laughs> so in the end, it's constantly I am not enough, isn't it? It's That's that, what it boils that, down it to. It all boils down to that. And that mm. creates enormous anxiety. So how can we be more content with what we have? How can we... I'm just wondering if this is like a modern disease. It's if, if our ancestors used to be content or if they were the same as us. I think it partially is a modern disease yeah. because we have more time... <laughs> uh, as, as, as you know, a lot of our duties and uh, things that we used to have to do are done by machines and we d we have more time. I suppose that's true. We don't spend hours having to, like, wash by hand anymore no. or anything. You don't have to go down to the fountain like uh, <laughs> my mother-in-law used to tell me she would have to do here in Italy when she was young. Go all go down to the fountain and sing their songs and wash the clothes. A machine does that. So while the machine is washing the clothes for you, you have time to ponder, to wonder. <laughs> and your hands aren't always busy doing something. So your mind can, it could be more of a, um, a luxury to so have these So do you think sorts. it's a lack of like physical, physicality, physical labor that is making us be more anxious? Because before we would be so busy that like doing everyday tasks that we, our minds, you literally you could yes you, uh, you, you didn't you, have if you time asked, you were so physically tired by the end of the day, day exhausted you'd lay in your bed and think ah oh, bedtime sleep you still might not have been content though because you still might have been comparing yourself to I don't know some duchess who had. <laughs> Who had, yeah, you know, aid in the... But how that? You wouldn't be... See, wouldn't you don't be see so it as much. Accessible, would it? No, it wasn't. You'd have to see things like in remote, like fashion magazines or like little newspapers. Well, like there was always people that were economically better off than yes. you. And there were people like even my mother-in-law, going back to her story, she said that she actually worked for these rich people in the, and, and, you know, her um, her dad used to look after the the, the, the grounds and, 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 and harvest the food and everything. And she said when the lady would come in from Milan, she was always dressed with the finest clothes. I don't think, she's never actually said that she wasn't content with her life, though, but she would notice it. I think it, it, was, so so far, it was so far removed from her that she could never even she was always imagine being like that. No, they were always very grateful that the lady was lovely. She let them have all the food they wanted on the farm and, you know, they could even sell some of the eggs and whatever. I mean, I, I can't remember all the details, but mm. yes, she was, they were always, they used to love. They used to love so this she, lady. So she actually named her first son, my 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 husband, after a name that that, that <laughs> these people gave her. They said, "Call him, you know, George. Call him George." Yeah. And so she named him George. So that I don't think she. So was, she was content, then you would say. Totally, <laughs> she was actually content. Yes, I mean there there were comparisons to be made, but perhaps you're right. It was kind of on a different. I think now the fact that we can, we have all the comparisons that we want are like in our hand. They're very close to us, aren't they? Because yeah. we see them, even though they're on a screen. 
And we follow these people that we compare ourselves to. Yeah, very often, yeah. We follow them so we get to see what they're doing today and, and what you're doing today. And so, yeah, the whole thing can become... It can become a disease of the modern era. You're right, yeah. I think it has become a disease. Well, it's become an anxiety-inducing mm. thing. Mm. It's 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 quite sad, really, because we have we have this technology, but instead of it making us feel better about ourselves, it's make it often making us feel worse about ourselves. Well, it's how you use it once again. Mm. It it can either increase your anxiety or decrease it. If you start, if you go on there and you're looking on your phone, you look for mindful practices, yoga, Pilates, uh, anything that you're particularly interested in, you can learn. There's university, ent entire courses you can study by looking. Mm. So it's, it's how you use it. Very often we don't know how to use it very well and so we can get caught up. And we in... get bombarded with this stuff all the time, don't we? Yeah, you need this in order to have the perfect skin. <laughs> you need to get this mm. so that your house will look sparkly. You need even, the ad even the advertisements now, they're so, before they used to be just like random. <laughs> Know. Yeah, now it's now they're so targeted yeah. towards your what you might be. So it, it it takes you down this like weird like loop of as if you're never content, never enough, never enough, never content. You're already probably not that content with yourself, mm. and perhaps where you are in your life. And so yeah, that I think coming back down to it, we have to. We have to learn to appreciate ourselves once again and understand that we are good enough and living a life that's not perfect, that's not as shiny as what we might think it's supposed to be, that we can't buy the house and we can barely maybe able to pay rent. That's good enough. Mm. That is good enough. And having... It make you feel so good if you thought like that. Yeah, and... and when when you can feel as if good enough is fantastic, then you don't have to have all this striving. Yeah, all this shiny stuff. The shiny, the the expectancy, the expectations, the it's it's so stressful. Mm, it's really tiring, isn't it? It's tiring mentally and exhausting and it it's it robs you of your real time that you have in this world it's robbing you so it's, it's uh, stealing the every day isn't it it's stealing all of it it's stealing it's all stealing the good all enough that you already have yeah it's stealing all of it because if you look around you you do probably have good enough if you're listening to this podcast you're managing to be able to have internet or whatever you've got you've you've probably already got good enough hmm. and you're not you know you're not doing that badly at the moment so whatever you do have it if you do think this is good enough well because when you think that something's good enough it actually makes you feel amazing what well, do you think it actually makes you feel amazing oh, yes. so because instantly it, because instantly it will make you feel amazing if you think oh i've got you know a one room rented apart rented one room rented room but this is amazing yeah i managed yeah i got this I've and got i'm this happy and with I've, it. I've got somewhere to sleep and i've got somewhere you're going to feel really good but yes. if you think oh no my uh, you know, my friends got, got their parents, parents or, yeah. are paying for their, their, and they've got a whole flat to themselves. Yeah. Then you're going to be feeling, oh, this isn't good enough, and I feel bad. Yeah, you're right. It's intentionally settling into the idea of being content with what you have. That's a skill. Yeah. I think that's a bit like a muscle. I think if you can be intentional about it, you have to kind of like think, okay, this is going to be my intent for the day. I am going to be content with what I have right now. And it's going to be good enough. So if I can pay for that bus fare to get there, and I'm not going to be looking at people that have cars and can get that. No, this is good enough. I can manage to get a ticket on the bus or whatever, you know, to just any random example here. Whatever it is, it's good enough. Mm. 
I think if you're intentional about that, that's how your mind can really begin to open and you can really begin to lose and shed all of that unwanted anxiety and comparisons and whatever the hell it is. Yeah, and if you look at all these shiny comparisons, the people that you're comparing yourself to, in the end, if you look into the properly into their lives, they probably have a lot of sense of um, not being good enough as well. That's why they have to kind of always be on show as well, I think. That's why they're very often people that do apparently have it all. They might talk to somebody who's leading a very simple life and think... Mm -hmm. How can you be happy? I mean, yeah. look at you. You've got, got nothing. nothing. <laughs> you, don't, you don't seem to have everything that I have. Why are you always so happy? It, it, because it's it's being content that isn't... What what you, Your job isn't even that great. Why are you content with that job? Yeah. Why aren't you striving for more? Yeah, because even... even it's like the fisherman story, yeah, even isn't the it? Work, to remember. Even the work has to be now so shiny and amazing. Yeah, you have yeah. to be the top at this and the, the amazing. The top at that. And so creative and so this and that. I think I remember, like, especially when I was at school, I remember grades. If I got just... Good enough. <laughs> Just good enough. I was happy. I was happy. So we did kind of, we weren't that over ambitious in things like that. But, w but I don't think in those days they like encourage you to, especially where we were in our schools, they didn't encourage you to be over ambitious. They just kind of told you you're going to work in a Maybe not, not us, maybe other people. Because well, we were we the were. immigrant children. We yeah, were just. There was lots of immigrants in that, that but there it was were, the school yeah. we went to. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Maybe because it wasn't like a grammar school or private school. They Perhaps. didn't really encourage you to do to do more than just be good enough. Yeah. Just to just settle. Su for, supposed to go like, into go society. Into yeah. Go and work somewhere. A factory. Basic, in a factory mm. or a supermarket or like settle for very little really. Yeah. But that was seen as just normal. Yeah, yeah, that was seen as normal, I guess so, you're right. And now those kind of jobs aren't really considered to be normal. Most people see, because that you see so much stuff that's so shiny on online, Yeah, that's not normal better anymore. Better positions. Yes, better, better positions, so you're always striving for more and more. And yes, it's good to strive for, to better yourself every day, but when it, Think think about anxiety. bettering our own mental health. Yeah. What about that? And it you leads know, to anxiety self care. Because not everyone's cut out to. No, and to, it's to fine. Be like that. Yeah. yeah, you want to do manual jobs like what we were saying before with your hands. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, there's there's much need for that in mm. the world today. Uh, you're right. Yeah, not everyone needs to go and get a degree. Not everyone no, but needs now to. It's almost like a necessity, even for the most mundane jobs that you need a degree. For jobs that before you could, like, go into, say, have an yeah, apprenticeship. Yeah, that's right. Now it's almost mandatory to have a degree for so many positions, which is ridiculous, I think. Yeah, I don't. I think I don't know. But that's just a big business of the education. Yeah, well, it seems business, like it'd be an education business. Yeah, but they're just making so much money for it mm. and putting people into debt as well because you get into so much debt. Yeah, you have to study. yeah, with the student loans. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, so definitely, I don't know. I don't know about that, but I think, I think, I think if we start thinking that being content is cool, mm. being content is powerful being content can be sexy then i think you know we can revolutionize we our it. world again yeah we own it say yeah this is fine for me so what <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I i'm not going on holiday this year i'm going to go down to the park with my little towel <laughs> and get a few rays of sunshine if i can that's fine that's good yeah. enough for me let's you know own it yeah. whatever you're doing even if you are doing something amazing be content with that you know that sometimes you don't even want to go to all these shiny places. No, you don't. You just want to stay at home, but you feel as if you have to, to say, oh, and tick yes. that off the box. tick it off. Where have you been I've then? been to New York. Oh. I've been to this. I've been to that. Yeah, truth is you don't want to do that. Some people don't. They don't like And that's playing. fine. Yeah. And that is fine. Uh, it's not like we're not saying, you know, become a little bit adventurous, do stuff, but only stuff that you want to do. Yeah. As this is a podcast like where a we're pressure. helping you relieve anxiety, 
our main goal in each of our episodes is to help you understand how your brain works and what might actually be giving you anxiety that you might not even be aware of. Mm. And not being content is one of those things that could really give you massive anxiety. And you it, it's very subtle. Once again, you might not be aware of it. Probably going about your day of it. not aware of it at all but you've got this feeling of not being good enough your life isn't good enough you're not where you're supposed to be your body isn't good enough your body's not good enough everything you do and it's one long struggle become aware of it mm. put a stop to it stop it now stop it now we're telling you you know stop it start being content and saying yes i am happy I am content. contentment. Contentment also leads to gratitude. The more content you feel, the more gratitude you feel. Yes, you're right <laughs> about that. Yeah. So that's yeah. always a positive. To be content, yeah, and it makes you feel more gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it does. <laughs> so we are content with the way this podcast has gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, contentment. You can. You can always be comparing yourself to others and never feel content. It's it's a strange world that we're in with this with all this competition. It is, it's yeah. Competing against each other when really we should be just accepting being content with what we have and how we're going about our day every day. Yeah, and make such a not, not to say that content doesn't mean having desires, no. but... These desires have to be truly and honestly your desires. Not, you know, you have to kind of like think about that for a moment. Are they really my desires? Yeah, or is this someone else's agenda? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I think that's true yeah. as well. Yeah. Share your thoughts and let us know how you feel. Are you content? Do you find that always striving for more gives you anxiety? Certainly would give us anxiety if yeah, that was the case. Definitely. So so learn to be content with what you have and be intentional about thinking that looking for the contentment that you already have and realizing that you're you are good enough and your life is good enough. Thank you so much for listening. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Please follow us and on Spotify you can actually leave a little note saying oh, what you felt about the sweet. episode. So very yeah, looking sweet. forward to hearing from you. And me. come and follow us on Instagram too at Get Bill with the English Sisters and the English Sisters. See you there. Bye. Bye.